Hello guys and girls, welcome back to Geekism, my name is John T and we're here back in our Let's Build series in Planet Coaster. Today we're doing another Main Street building, the last one we're going to be doing for a little while. After this we're going to dive into our pirate area uh, completely and stay over there until that's complete. Uh, but, after something a little bit special today, um, if you guys don't know, we set up a Patreon page uh, a little while ago and one of the tiers, one of the higher tiers, is that you get your name uh, in built into the game that we're playing so either we'll name a staff member after you or a building after you depending on what we're playing and originally I thought uh, that we could just name staff members after the patrons but after a little think about it and see if we can come up with something a bit more interesting uh, I came across the idea of the Hall of Presidents which is something that features in the Walt Disney Parks uh, which is a, a big hall full of animatronics of all the presidents and um, you can go in there and they all tell different stories and things like that. I thought that'd be quite good to replicate that and create a Hall of Patrons. So this is uh, based on the Hall of Presidents in Disneyland in California, uh, although they're quite similar to the ones in Disney World as well in Florida, uh, but this is uh, slightly more based around the uh, the one in California. So it's a uh, it's an American style building. I'm not too 100% sure about where, uh, what sort of it, period it's set as. I'm sure somebody in the comments will let me know. Uh, I'm looking at you Dan if you're watching, you <laughs> found enough knowledge from Disney. Uh, and I figured out the hair that this is something I saw somebody else do that I really liked is that if you put some of the signs that are perfectly flat behind walls uh, the, the, the text just slightly appears above it uh, which means you can add walls under text without being able to see the signs. I thought it was great. And also we've used some of the uh, the star pieces there from the winter update and just sunk them into the wall to give some really nice little deep bits of detail. So that was uh, that was really good as well. Spent a long time on this building to be honest, and this, unfortunately there's only going to be one Let's Build series this week. Uh, one Let's Build episode even, sorry. Uh, purely because this has taken me so long. And I find that uh, buildings that are based on a real life thing using a reference point usually do take a bit longer. Because rather than just placing down pieces that look good, you're having to place down pieces that look accurate. And it takes a little bit longer to go through and find some stuff that uh, that, that works. These uh, these archways here have a bit of a, a bit of a rounded arch on top of them. We couldn't make with wall pieces, so I've had to create something using the art pieces there. That's uh, that's pretty close to the original. Um, if I remember, I'll place a picture of the original up now so you can see uh, what it looks like. So we're building uh, some of the detail. The building has a large balcony at the front of it, and uh, so this is just sort of building up that using the stucco pieces to create the uh, the, the wall. And again, it's just a case of copying things around. Uh, the one thing that this building is actually, in the end of it, made up with about five or six different buildings because I had some real trouble with the shape of the building, uh, being able to create that on one uh, one plane. Just it isn't possible. Uh, on the right of the building, afterwards, you'll see there's a small uh, rectangular, uh, circular, sorry, balcony, and it was just no no way to do it on this on the same building. So this thing is actually built up of about five or six buildings altogether. Uh, we're using the classic brick here and using some of the station pieces to be able to fill in the top here. The classic brick archway isn't very nice, it's just a, a square arch. So we're actually using one of the stucco arches there uh, but with the red colour the uh, same as the brick and it kind of works quite well. If you look really closely you can see that it's not a brick pattern uh, but overall I think at a glance it looks fine. And then it's a case of building up this balcony here using uh, some of the floor pieces again. This is the first time I think that we actually an end up with two buildings uh, because the uh, the floor piece there had to be a little bit thicker than it is normally to cover up all the gubbins inside that we've created using these uh, these archways. We use some uh, pieces there to finish it off with. Then it's a case of uh, doing some windows along the back wall here. And again, we have to make some custom windows because they're actually quite large and there isn't really anything in the game suitable. Uh, so we use these door pieces and a couple of the western windows to create the right sort of shape. And then I'm looking for something just to fill in that gap there. End up using one of those uh, corner pieces actually, it's just about the right sort of size. And then copy those across. One of them actually has a angular top and then two of them have rounded tops. So it's just a case of doing one of them in the middle there. Um, just finding the right piece that's, uh, that's suitable for it, there we go. Uh, oh sorry, the middle the middle one is round, sorry, and the outside ones are angular, there we go. Uh, using these pieces, love these, I think they're really good, they really cap off a building, and it's little things like this I think that really made the difference between uh, just having a brick box and uh, and having a building that looks pretty realistic, is using these sort of stone edging pieces. And we're using uh, one of the castle supports there, just on its side, to create a bit of uh, edging at the bottom. 
And then we start on the roof. This first roof is uh, pretty uh, okay to have it uh, as, as part of the same building. Uh, but in the end, I actually make it its own building so we can just knock it forward like that to give it a little overlap. And then we use some stucco pieces to, uh, to finish it off. The piece inside here ends up having a wooden texture. And, uh, and it also has the numbers 19, uh, 17, oh I forget now, it's a year I assume that when the building was meant to have been built, um, it carved into the wood, obviously that's a very tricky thing to be able to do, uh, we use a sign in the end and it's probably a bit big and a little bit garish because of the limitations we've got with this current signage, uh, but it's about as best as we can get I think. Place those, uh, those pieces there, it's just a case of finding the right size so that they don't overlap. And you can see a little couple of bits sticking out there that we end up clearing up in the end. Placing a couple that way just to finish that gap. There we go, we just took those in. And then it's a case of finding a nice flat sign that we can use to knock it back into there we go. And finding a suitable sort of colour and size. 19, uh, 1787, there we go. Now we're going to work on the interior for a little bit. At the end of this time lapse we're actually going to cut to a live bit where we actually finish the interior using the, uh, the patrons that we need. But here I'm trying to make it look a little bit like a theatre, again basing it loosely on the uh, the actual ha uh, Hall of Presidents. Uh, they're sort of stood on a two-tiered wooden stage. They all have lights on them and uh, and as the light comes on the animatronic bursts into uh, into into life and, and sort of acts out a, a scene that, um, that the President is known for. Using some of the wooden benches here with paths underneath to get them to fit in properly. Again, people weren't actually walking here, it was just a, a simple way of getting benches. Uh, although you could if you wanted to, you know, change this around and have shops in it. I'm going to try and put it onto the workshop, although I've got a feeling it may, it may be over the 2,000 pieces. Um, but if, I, if it does go in the workshop, there'll be a link in the description. Using some of the stucco pieces here, this first time I've actually done a separate interior and exterior to a building. So uh, there's actually a, going to be a small gap in between this wall and the outer wall so that we can have both the detail on the inside and the outside that we want. And we're creating some uh, some lights here that we can move, use all around the building using the uh, rather cool little western hanging hook thing, I don't know what you'd call it. It works quite nicely here with these sort of uh, lanterns inside. I think it looks quite nice. And then you'll see that we've done the uh, the stage there as a as a black area so as the lights look good when we get round to doing them. And it's just a case of bringing the whole thing up. I think we end up thinking two is a bit too high, so we end up going there, we go one and a half all the way around. And then uh, we finish off the interior, cap it off with a nice wooden roof, and make sure the roof doesn't stick out. That's the only place it does, luckily. The rest of the uh, building, like I say, will build a separate exterior. And then we're gonna come in here. I wanted to build some uh, sort of stage stage curtains. So these pieces are really, really useful. Unfortunately, you get this very thin white line on them, no matter what colour you make them, unfortunately. Something looks pretty good to make a sort of uh, curtain there, and then we use some art shapes to create the larger curtains on the side. Again, I think that works out pretty nicely. And, um, and then finally, one of the other pieces of flags there, but made a gold colour for some uh, tie backs. There's a case of building around the uh, the next part of the building. This was the trickiest part. This is the uh, external balcony, and I'm not too sure what sort of uh, uh, what's the word, what, what sort of meaning this has. But it's a very integral part of the building. Uh, there is a small circular balcony with two wooden chairs underneath it. So I wanted to replicate this as best as I can. And this was where I really started to struggle with uh, the wall pieces, getting them to work how I wanted them to. So this is where we really split, end up splitting up into, into various different uh, different buildings to get it to work. And finding a way of doing it. The other thing I noticed eventually is that that, that that balcony we've just added there ends up cutting in on the inside and sticking through. So we end up actually going back and making the inside thinner. Although I haven't recorded that because it's really very interesting. Then we do the bottom floor there. And uh, this was quite fun, making a nice sort of patio area using some of the uh, some of the brick edging, and then we carry that brick edging round there into an area that we're going to place some plants in a little while as well, and then uh, round that way as well. These things are a little bit long, so they hang over there, but luckily we can use some uh, brick pillar pieces to fill those in in a little moment, so we don't have those bits hanging over. And we can also use some of the castle supports here as long as you turn the castle stone red, 
fits in relatively well, although I wouldn't really use much larger pieces of it. Uh, there's everything we've had to do there at the back of the room is use one of the other different types of brick because the castle, the, the, sorry, the classic brick doesn't have a rounded, uh, rounded wall piece, unfortunately. Uh, but again, I think it just works relatively well. It looks more like a, a feature piece as opposed to just not having the right part. You can see there, look in the middle, we've had to use a different type of brick. But overall, I think it looks, it looks pretty good. So we have some doors on either side. Try to make them relatively close to the actual ones with these sort of shutters either side of them. And a little bit of interest on the top. It's just a case of hiding parts of it in the wall. And then we carry over the windows here. I've tried to do a little bit of a uh, of forced perspective here, although the actual building doesn't really have much. Uh, it's more just to keep it in line with the rest of our main street. So you'll see here the uh, the windows are sort of three by six panels, I think they are there, we've made them. Three by uh, one, two, yeah, six, whereas at the bottom we spread them out a little bit more to make them a bit taller. And uh, we just have to figure out what, what we're doing here. I can't figure out what I'm doing here, actually. Oh, I'm just dropping, there we go, the second floor to make it a little bit thinner than the uh, than the bottom floor there. The first floor, sorry, make it a little bit thinner than the bottom floor. And then we really start to struggle getting the roof on now. Tried to use that trick of moving the grid over, but couldn't quite get it to do what I wanted to. So end up just building the whole roof on a completely different building, and therefore we can make a nice simple overhang. Try me hardest to figure it out there, and just not getting on very well with it at all. So we end up just doing it that way instead. And uh, it makes it a little bit fiddly when you're going back and forth in between buildings later on, when we build the back of the uh, of the, uh, the whole building, but overall it's uh, we got there in the end. Looking for a nice simple spire here. The actual building itself doesn't really have a spire, it has just more of a rounded roof, but I thought it would make a nice bit of a feature if we had a spire there. And then uh, we fill in the corners there, like I say, to cover up that bit of brick that wouldn't hang over. And then I really wanted to get the chairs in here. I didn't want to make the chairs out of wood because uh, we, we would have struggled to get it the right sort of size. So we end up actually placing a path there and adding some benches. And I think it works out quite nicely. Here we have to do a, a bit of a bodge on the rounded. We can't really do full rounded railings there without building myself. But again, the parts really quite just aren't quite small enough to do them. So we end up doing them this way. And I think it ends up look, looking pretty good. The flags there are very reminiscent of the uh, flags on the actual building. And uh, we finish it out with some nice colours. Always struggle to find this flower part I'm looking for. There we go. So in the end here, place some path down. Fortunately, you can't get rid of the curb on this bit of path because it's raised up. I think it looks actually quite smart with the uh, with the circle there. It looks like it's part of the building. Now we're going to do a bit of work around the front here. I wanted some nice uh, sort of flower boxes with trees in. Again, very similar to the actual build. Struggled to uh, find the right parts here. Tried to do with, with these brick edges, but think felt like it ended up a bit thin. So instead use these ones, and these may be slightly a bit thick to be honest, but I do think they look pretty smart when we finish with them. So it's a case of sort of filling them into the gap there, using these uh, handy signs here as a nice bit of railing. See a lot of people use these, there's a few pieces that you can do this with, but I think this one looks quite nice and grandiose. And then we fill it in with a bit of uh, the plain bush there, but paint it green so it doesn't really look like flowers. And then the birch tree, I think this one is. Is the right sort of size and density so that you can still sort of see through them and then we can turn them over until the four and then just go back and swap the trees around so that they're all different placing the smallest one there so you can see the balcony behind it fill in a little bit more on the front here with some simple windows and a little bit of uh, cornice work we're using one of the wooden pieces here painted white i think it looks quite nice and uh, just uh, edging that off around the corner there so it makes a bit more sense <laughs> there we go and then a few windows, try and copy that one over. Uh, it's a little bit big on the top, we end up dropping that down to the bottom and then making a smaller window on the top again to, to sort of continue with that uh, false perspective idea. So we, go, we end up just using a standard window in the end. I think it looks quite smart. Around the back here, filling it all in. Uh, that's going to be the end of the sort of facade of the building. The back of the building we actually make to look like a, uh, a sort of big steel box like you often find in in, um, in theme parks you're not really meant to see them but occasionally you get a glimpse of them from overhead views or if you're wandering around a path they haven't really done much work on or whatever uh, but uh, we've got a big box on the back something we did on the log flume something we're going to do across the uh, across the main street in the end so it's just a case of finishing off this last little bit here with a few windows and carrying on the uh, the cornice around the bottom there there we go and there we bring up the uh, metal pieces I think we use. There we go. And we use those to 
box it all in. And uh, we still do a bit of work on this to make it look good. Uh, you know, even though it's still big, a big silver box, we still want to make it look sort of realistic. So you'll see once we've sort of boxed it all in, we take the roof up a little higher there um, because you don't want to be able to see these from the uh, the ground in front of the building. So we make sure that the uh, all the, the facade roof covers all these sort of metal pieces. And this is where we start to get into some slight issues regarding the, uh, the roofing. We end up having to move everything across a little bit. There we go, raising that roof up. And uh, it get there in the end, it just takes us a little while to make it look sensible. Fortunately, we are a little bit limited with the, uh, with the fact that the roofs have to be stuck to a grid system. Uh, but in the end, we end up, oh there we go, we end up changing that round to a corner so we can cover up that area there. I think it looks quite nice in the end. There we go. That's a little bit just to neaten it all up. And then we add a little bit of detail on the top here. Again, using the wall pieces there where you would uh, fill in the gap. We end up with a nasty little corner here that we can't really do much with. So we end up finding, uh, trying to cover it with one of those doesn't really work. Uh, so we end up using an art piece actually just to sort of box it in. And it just looks like a, a box where you would, I don't know, store electrics or something. We carry on a few art pieces over there just to make it carry on. Some stairs down to the lower roof. And then some uh, some aircon units, some pipes, and uh, just a few things to make it look a bit more interesting. Copy those windows across to the other side of the front of the building. There we go. And around there as well. And then it's a case of making the back of the building look a bit more interesting. Oh, first of all, sorry, we're going to finish off this area here with a little bit of raised ground. And uh, we're just copying those pieces across, same as having to work out the angles again. Makes things a lot easier once you've done something once to just copy it over and use it again. There we go. Simple stuff. And then, uh, yeah, we raise that up to finish off the concrete area there and fill it in with some trees and bushes. And again, we will carry the trees and bushes down past the uh, train tracks there so you can't see the back of this building from the train. That's a real key point is that all these, the back of the, all these facades should not be viewable from any point of the park that uh, the public can walk around. So here we go, we use these uh, doors and windows that are suitable. A couple of the old recycle bins, can't get enough of those. And then uh, I like quite like the idea of having some random bits of signage from old buildings, a few tools. That's actually a snowman piece, it's a little bit oversized, but I still think it works out quite nice in the end, a few more. Uh, windows and there we go. Right we're going to cut now to a bit of live action footage where we're going to finish off the building interior by adding our patrons. Right so we're going live action with our let's build, doesn't happen very often but I wanted to come in here and do these uh, in sync. You can see there that we had to change the uh, the walls slightly whoops this is going to be tricky inside here. <laughs> uh, we had to change the walls slightly because of the uh, the balcony on that side there kicking in but we've got plenty of space here to add our uh, animatronics in. Now, I think the easiest way to do this is probably just randomly pick animatronics for each person. We have six very generous uh, pledges that we need to add in. So we're going to go to animatronics. And I'm just going to look away, move my mouse around until I've landed on one. Where are we? Cracker, we're not having Kraken. <laughs> so we'll go to the nearest. Uh, I suppose we could have the night guarding. That could be one. Yeah, okay. So the first person is a night guarding. Now, unfortunately, most of these figures are male. And we do have a few female patrons, so I do apologise that uh, it's not probably not the most ideal. If we ever get some more female uh, ones of these, we'll, we'll come back and change it around a little. And of course, some of you have used screen names, so I'm not too sure of your gender at all. But uh, there's going to be the first one. I'm going to place you down like so. Fantastic. Uh, let's move them up so we can see them all. Here we go. Next one is going to be a Trooper Shooter. Trooper shooting. Yeah. We'll bring you round. And we're going to have, we'll do uh, three and three for now. There we go. Oops, next one. Uh, trooper shot. I don't really want to, want to use those ones because they fall down. Uh, oh, that's right in the middle. Let's go for a pirate cover shot then. Uh, belt drive, night challenging. We can have a night challenging. Bring you up a little. Oops. Oh, you're a bit, you're a bit big, aren't you? Really. <laughs> um, 
that's it for now. We, we can spread you out a little, can't we? Uh, I'll put you there. Uh, oh, perfect. Red coat guarding, that's Grace. You can go there. And uh, Bandit Angry Shot, there we go. That's right. So this is much more aggressive than the actual Hall of Presidents, but <laughs> it's there. Uh, it's a pretty good start, I think. And then we need to actually get into uh, the building pieces and go to our signage. Uh, I think our best sign is probably going to be there's quite a small western one we can use. I think that's going to be the one we have to use. So we'll go uh, left to right in the names, just going down the list in that the Patreon is giving me. So there's no favouritism here. Literally just go in as they come in. So our first one is Abby. we go. Abby, thank you. Uh, next one here, the Angry Bandit. Uh, oh no, Angry Pirate is going to be uh, Biffy. And you there, Biffy, thank you. Next one, who's this? This is uh, our, uh, our red coat guy. He's, oh, uh, you'll know guy, I'm sure. Uh, if you don't know Guy Chicago, I'm going to quickly jump out here and show him where you'll know his name from. I only even spotted this the other day. Uh, guy Chicago is that guy there. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> so uh, I, only spotted, I was looking at that the other day and I was, I was just having a little wonder through that tunnel for no reason. I was like, I know that name. <laughs> and it all came together. Uh, who else have we got? The next one, the next knight is going to be... I'm gonna spell this one right, pronounce it right. Susurrations. There we go, that fits just about fits on there, great. Right there here is the next one. He's gonna be Wiz Spencer. Uh, he's actually a friend of mine in real life. So thank you, Wiz. And then up here, our last one for now is uh, Taylor. Taylor Craig. There we go. So we've got Abby, Biffy, Guy Chicago, Cicerations, Wiz Spencer and Taylor Craig. You are our first patrons in the Hall of Patrons and hopefully we'll get a few more over there. Whenever we do we'll just pop back in here and fill them out. So there you go. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed the building. Like I say I'll try my best to add it onto the workshop. I'm pretty sure it's under 2000 and obviously I'll leave this blank for you to do what you want with. Uh, but there you go. Thank you very much for watching. Hope you've enjoyed it. If you have please give us a like. It really does help out the channel. And if you're not already don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.